Peter Lemberg, Director General of Deutsche Welle, welcome. Thank you. You're relaunching DWTV, English service. What's driven you to do this? Why, why this change now? Well, basically, we are not only relaunching DWTV uh, into DW News, we are, have also launched a new uh, app, which is uh, um, surely uh, as important for us as the new TV channel. But uh, the new TV um, offer in English is uh, much more uh, news and information orientated. Um, and we, we saw that we, that we got a bit behind uh, to our competitors. And, uh, uh, and uh, I think it's, Germany has a quite a high reputation worldwide for the moment. We should also give an, give, give an offer which is uh, comparable to others. Let's put it this way. We don't want to copy others, but uh, we want to have a, a same level playing field where we can also uh, show what kind of journalistic offers we have, and we have a lot of good ones. So what's your USP or unique selling point then compared to the well, main competition? First of all, I think we, we like to integrate uh, the digital world uh, much more into the, the television linear uh, TV station. Uh, and secondly, I think it's uh, the USP is coming from Germany. So it's uh, if you want to know something about Germany, you probably get informed by the BBC, but not as much as uh, you would have uh, get it from, from Deutsche Welle. Or, um, so I think we are the original. If you want to know something about Germany, come to us. And this is, I think, the main USP. So knowing things about Germany and knowing how Germany thinks about other international or regional um, issues. Local heroes go their own way. Local heroes want to change their world. Local heroes need global insights. We are there for you with more news and information, comprehensive background and relevant analysis. For those who demand more. The new DW, made for minds. Starting June 22nd. And who do you think your main audience is or is going to be? Well, this is uh, normally, I think, uh, the audiences of uh, international broadcasters are a bit the same. I mean, they're uh, people who are interested in, in, in other parts of the world, who are interested in politics, uh, in, in democracy, and uh, they are also interested uh, uh, in the way Europe and Germany thinks. So, um, and of, of course, you have uh, an audience normally um, when you describe it, it's kind of higher education and, uh, um, and there are a lot of decision makers mm -hmm. um, in this uh, um, audience. And so we, we, as everybody I think in this business, uh, trying to get the decision makers, um, but, but also we are open for, for everyone. I mean, we, we want to have young students who, who have uh, maybe who have to struggle uh, in their countries uh, because they, they don't have enough freedom. So. Um, I think it's uh, you have to focus on a certain um, uh, target group, uh, but you have to be also broad enough and interesting enough and understandable enough for, for, for a lot of people. You mentioned competition. It's increasing. We're seeing Turkey, for example, in the TRT world. Who do you see your principal competition as being? Oh, well, obviously, um, we have a, a competition with the um, let's say, more sportive competition with the BBC or France 24, um, but uh, or the Voice of America. These are uh, um, uh, broadcasters who are, let's say, have also a different perspective on the world probably, but they have the same values. So I wouldn't say these are the main competitors, but I think the main competitors in this um, struggle um, upon the opinion in the world or the opinions in the world are surely from, from countries which are which are much more autocratic and non-democratic. So mention them. I mean CCTV or RT, they are competitors, yes. And um, we would like to bring an offer which uh, is uh, um, good enough to compete with them. And do you think they will react to what you're doing? I mean, it's competition. I mean, that's normal when they react. Mm -hmm. We'll see. But I don't fear anything or something. It's, uh, I think the normal, normal 
uh, thing that uh, when the competitor has a feeling that he has to get better and that we did, then the, the play is changing a bit. But, uh, and it's a question of constantly raising games around the world. Yes, it is. And uh, But we are kind of optimistic because uh, the thing we're doing, I mean, we're launching on Monday, but uh, um, the thing what we see already and what we can offer and see in the app, well, I think it's uh, something which is um, quite good. You've talked about the app. How does the world's move to digital and the fact that everybody now has HDS head down syndrome looking into their devices, how does that affect the strategy of Deutsche Welle? Well, first of all, you, you have to um, say that the app and social media um, always must be also first. So you can't only produce for TV and then put something in. So you have to really plan together. You have to plan the digital um, um, offers and the linear offers. Um, and um, so it, it changes the way you produce. And um, I think it also is important that um, you can use um, the same material which you produce for the uh, for the linear TV also in the app but then you have to change the thing you do in the linear TV because um, consuming an app is a totally different thing um, so you have to find the right mixture between not doing everything twice but also being as specific for the media for as, as, as you need it which is a daily challenge I think mm -hmm. but uh, the digital and the social media is the future so the linear TV is still big, but we all don't know when it's going to decline massively in our, let's say, worldwide um, information channel business. When you look at the way digital media is evolving, um, both in other markets and here, how would you describe it? Is it all happening at the same pace? Uh, is Germany outpacing uh, other countries in the way that people are accepting apps and non-linear TV? I think that uh, Germany is, is for, for a European or Western country, quite advanced in, in the digital world. Um, but um, we have to be not prepared for the German market. We have to be prepared for the African, Asian or South American market, uh, uh, just to name a few. And uh, so um, we have to see how is the, the environment there. And there you have differences. I mean, if you see in the Asian market, it's, uh, it's much more uh, advanced uh, uh, linear TV technique, HD, video on demand, OTT, everything is already there and it's very strong. In Africa, you have uh, other, other issues. They're also coming up with a linear TV, but also on the mobile scale, they're quite, quite effective. And so you have to find for every region the right answer. So is there still potential to grow? Um, you, you've done this launch now, um, you've had a revamp of the DW strategy, um, and the world is still changing. So, have you still got room to maneuver, I suppose, within your future strategy? Obviously, we want to grow also in, in, in uh, users and viewers and numbers. Obviously, yes. I mean, that's also one reason why we're doing it, because we see there is a, um, a heavy competition, so why don't you we jump into this competition? And then it's one part is to get uh, market shares from others, which is the normal thing. The other part is uh, seeing that uh, uh, more people get access to information via the internet, via the mobile devices. So, so you have new clients, put it this way. And then we want to also address these new clients uh, in the regions to, to, to come to us, to Deutsche Welle. And uh, so I think, yes, there is potential for growth in this business. And is marketing a key part of that? How do you, how do you go about marketing a global brand? Well, marketing is, is, is very, very important, uh, but also distribution is important. So uh, you have, if you have a great brand, but, but you can't find it in the region or in the country where you want to address people, then it's difficult. So I think it's uh, to find the right mixture between marketing, distribution and program. Because if you don't uh, have the right distribution and the right marketing, you, you might have a great program, but nobody's seeing it or nobody's using it. So um, I think we we have uh, good chances to to um, have also uh, quite a nice marketing because we are already a good, reliable brand. Deutsche Welle has a high reputation and uh, in a lot of parts of the world. So we don't have to invent ourselves totally new. But we have to show that um, the reliable 
good, serious, non-biased quality journalism from Germany comes into also a new package and uh, into, into new um, um, ways of addressing people and more modern, more young. And so I think uh, this is the target we have now. Mm -hmm. You're a, a, you come from a long uh, journalistic career, um, principally in the commercial sector. Um, there are many challenges facing journalistic organisations at the moment. Uh, the rise of Islam, refugees, migrants, um, instability in parts of Europe, um, as well as the radical changes to the media that we've been discussing. Um, how do you see all this affecting Deutsche Welle and indeed German media organisations? I think it's uh, getting much more difficult to produce high quality journalism in the world. And, uh, even if you have uh, um, the technical capacities now everywhere with HD or the internet or mobile devices, uh, the content is in danger because uh, there's so many pressures, uh, either from terrorism or from propaganda, or it comes from political systems who are um, dedicated not to let free journalism and free media uh, be on the ground. So I think the challenges are, are, are higher now than it had been maybe 20 years ago for, for, for good journalism. And so, yes, serious journalism with a free democratic, uh, democratic uh, spirit is endangered in the world. And so I think there is also this role for, for Deutsche Welle to, to try at least uh, to um, get more good and, and serious and democratic journalism into the world. You're funded at Deutsche Welle by the German government. How, um, what are the challenges for maintaining a good relationship with this principal stakeholder? Well, obviously you, you have to um, do the things you're supposed to do by law. I mean, we have a law which uh, says, yes, we're getting the funds by the, the German Bundestag and the German government gives it to us at the end. Um, but we are independent by law, so we have to um, always um, take care that this is also being being organized well. But uh, seriously, I have to say it's, it's a very good um, uh, situation we are in because also the politicians um, in our government, in our parliament, see this as a very high value that we are independent. So um, there is, maybe in other countries, there are bigger pressures on state televisions, like in Germany, but uh, especially also Deutsche Welle is a um, consensus among all parties and politicians that it has to be independent to be also a role model for others. I mean, if you're not independent and you do what your uh, government always wants, then, then you don't show uh, that you stand for your values. Since you took over DW in 2013, you've managed immense change across the organization. What's been the biggest challenge? Well, the biggest challenge is always um, that you don't have enough money mm -hmm. and you have to, have to uh, convince people to invest in your ideas. So this happened and this is very, um, uh, a very uh, nice and that it happened. And um, the other challenge was also to convince the people who are working with Deutsche Welle that change is necessary and uh, that we have to focus on our strategies. And uh, I have to say that we, that we in, a, in a relatively short time, we, we did a lot and uh, we, we demanded a lot also from our, from our people who work here. Who work, work here. So uh, I'm very happy that this uh, is now at the stage where we can see success is coming. Uh, we, the offers which we talked about all the months and, and years before are now real and uh, this is a very satisfying thing. What are your remaining challenges? Well, there are a lot of remaining challenges. I mean, first of all, this all has to run smoothly. Um, and then we have to see that uh, the world is not now at its end. History has not stopped just because we have now a new television offer or a new app. We have to now get more market shares. That's what we want. Uh, we have to convince people that uh, it's Deutsche Welle is a good brand, that we can, can bring something into the competition. And obviously, um, one has to consolidate now the process of reforms, which we did, because we did a lot of reforms also in Deutsche Welle. And so this has to be now, on, on one hand, you have to now really show that you're 
that we are in the markets and that we are going into the competition, but on the other hand, you have to give also a bit of peace to your people who have suffered a lot of change. We've talked a lot about the changes around the relaunch of television. What future does radio have at Deutsche Bell? Well, we still have 11 languages where we offer radio products, mainly in Africa. And uh, I think it's, it's very important that we, that we also there see, see that shortwave is also in Africa um, not, not, going, not going to get bigger. Um, so we have to be also in digital radio, we have to be on FM and we have to be in the mobile devices. And, um, so this is a big challenge also to, to not lose track there. And uh, on the other hand, we, are, um, we have to see whether there are markets where we should go do more in radio. But we're not yet there. We have to now, first of all, start our television channel and then see what, what we can do. So it's one challenge at a time. Basically, no, it's more challenges, but you should limit the number of challenges, not to have too many of them at the same time. You run the Deutsche Welle Academy, providing training for broadcasters and media houses around the world. What's the role of that in the, the new Re-Energize organization? Also, the Academy has focused on, on, on special countries and also had uh, a process of reorganizing. And um, so we are very happy that we have this academy, which has a quite high reputation in the world and uh, is doing a great job. And we want to work more closely together even with, with our academy. It's, it's a um, fixed part of Deutsche Welle. And um, we're very happy with them and uh, they're doing a good job. So, If you had a message to uh, give to organizations that are thinking of starting an international news channel, and there are some on the horizon, what would it be? What would what would you a word of advice would you give to them? Well, basically, uh, it's important what your viewers want to see, and not what you or your government wants to 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 show. So, I think this is the the, the main thing in television, but it's uh, not something spectacular. All the good advice is I need for Deutsche Welle, so I'm not a consultant for others. <laughs> Is research a key part of that? Knowing what the understanding what the what the market wants. Yes, of course you have to have to know in which region what kind of information is needed, and um, so you have to have a very good research department. Uh, we have uh, a very advanced uh, market research uh, department at Deutsche Welle, and so research is is, is, is very important for us. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Global Media Forum is taking place over the next three days. It's a huge gathering, 2,000 odd people from markets all around the world, a lot of Deutsche Welle's partners are there. Um, tell us about what this means for Deutsche Welle and, and for Germany. I think it's uh, very important and I'm very happy that my predecessor organized this, uh, um, Eric Bettermann, and, uh, because uh, it's, it's a great meeting point for, for people to talk about the same issues. and. Uh, also, people who have uh, the same convictions, and to so we have to also with our debates, we can mobilize other people and, and, and help them to bring the spirit of, of free media into into other parts of the world. And uh, I think for Germany, it's uh, as a as a country which is really uh, uh, very into international cooperation, and uh, which is always trying to to get bring people together and not to separate. It. It's a good. Uh, Forum and it's uh, something which uh, is really worth uh, doing it. And uh, as far as I know, everybody who is involved here is happy that we're doing this. And um, we we really think that cooperation um, is the key to to success. And we want to cooperate with our partners. And it's a good place here to do this. Mm -hmm. You've done immense things over the over the past couple of years. But tell us about Peter Lindbergh, the man himself. What is it that makes you tick? What's important in your life? Are you a news junkie, for example, or do you have lots of other interests? I think I have kind of other interests, but uh, my main interest for the moment is, uh, besides my, my family, is uh, obviously the, 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 the well-doing of Deutsche Welle. So um, I'm, I'm not, uh, not only a news uh, junkie, I, I was one probably, but. Uh, I'm now more into how do we can bring this news, whatever it is, to people and how can we get better. So I think it's uh, 
I'm a bit of a perfectionist in, in what we're doing, and um, but al always trying to do it with a bit of humor and, and fun, so everybody who works here likes to do it. So that's what we also want. So um, to to have a interesting workplace for everybody and to create also a spirit for the people where they have this feeling, hey, okay, yes, we can do it. We can, we can get better and we can get into the markets. That's what drives me now. Okay, Limbo, thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Simon.